Windows 7. It took a while for Windows 7 to kick in when it first came out. People were stuck on Windows XP for a very long time. And there are a lot of companies that are still on Windows XP, right? So, you really don't expect for Microsoft's new operating system to take off. One thing I do notice is that when a Mac, when Apple comes out with a new OS, people immediately adopt it right away. They try to get the latest version so they can upgrade their Macs if their hardware is compatible. But when it comes to Windows, it's not the same. Because when Microsoft upgrades their Windows, it's usually like a major upgrade. It's like a big deal. You know, like Windows XP, Windows Me, Windows, uh, what was the, uh, Vista, right, Vista, which was a big improvement to Windows Me, you have to admit that. I never had a Windows Me machine, but you have to admit that Windows Vista was a big improvement to Windows Me. Then, of course, Windows 7 came out, and that was... I mean, in my opinion, Windows 7 is the best operating system that Microsoft came out with. It's uh, way, way more stable, even more so than Windows XP. Because when something crashes, when the operating system crashes, the Windows Explorer goes away. But it doesn't create that blue screen of death. It doesn't freeze every single thing that you're working on. It doesn't just shut down your machine. It just, the windows it crashes. But everything else is software. So if you got like a document open and you're working on something, you're not worried about it. If you want to restart your machine, you save what you got, then restart your machine on your own. But you don't really lose anything. Microsoft Office. It has been a tremendous upgrade from Office XP. Then you have Office 2003, then Office 2007. And I think each upgrade that, have, that, went, that we've seen from Microsoft Office team has been a good upgrade. It's, it's been an awesome program. In fact, it's, it works phenomenally, if you ask me. The only thing is, is that Office 2010 is a huge improvement to 2003 and 2007. So, really and truly, Microsoft is really killing it, if you ask me. And this new Metro style that we're uh, going through right now, Windows 8, it's going to be a while before Windows 8 kicks in. And this brings in the topic of my discussion right now. Is that Windows 8 hasn't seen that many sales by itself, even though it sold several million copies. It's probably not as high as a Mac or Apple product or Apple OS uh, sale. But really and truly, the, I, I know very few people that upgraded their Macs, even. Because it is quite expensive. When you upgrade your operating system, uh, your Apple a Mac product, it's a pretty high price to do so, you know, going from one to another. Apple's made some mistakes as well. There's been some upgrades that didn't go, go so well, but eventually they got it right. And let's talk about phones. Apple Pi came out. Great hardware. Sweet hardware. I mean, whew. I have to admit, I don't like the way it looks, and I don't like the way it feels. I'll, t I'll be honest. I don't like the way the iPhone 5 looks, and I really do not like the way it feels. Maybe with a nice case on it, where it can make it a little bit bigger and fatter. I got big hands. And... 
um, without a case, the iPhone 5 does not feel good to me. But the hardware inside the phone is great. It's a sweet, it's a sweet piece of technology. Definitely a big improvement to the iPhone 4 or the iPhone 3. Tell you the truth, my favorite exterior iOS device is the iPhone 3GS. Or I guess I could say I, iPhone 3 because it's, you know, it's all the same. It's just, you know, uh, different hardware inside. But the iPhone 3GS, I believe, had the best feeling. It felt great in my hands. And then I will have to say the iPhone 4 felt really nice in my hands. I liked the way it felt. Even though it was a little hard on the edges, it was a little hard and a little, you know, felt like you can cut a, uh, cut a steak with the iPhone because it was so sharp on the edges. I, I do have to say that the iPhone 4 well, it's a good, good looking. It was a good looking phone too. It was a great looking phone, and if they had elongated the phone or made it long, uh, lit or height wise, if they um, increased, uh, you know, to a 16 by 9 screen, I think that would have been a great looking phone. But of course, if you notice that every iteration of iPhone, from you know when they do a different number, like iPhone one, iPhone two iPhone 3, 4, and now 5, they create a new design. I really don't like the design of the iPhone 5. And here's one thing that I do know. iPhone 1 through 4 was designed by Steve Jobs himself. He had a lot of input into the design of that phone. And because of that, it was really his vision the whole entire time. I'm talking about the design, the exterior. The interior, of course, was a lot of Steve Jobs' input, but Steve Jobs is not nothing like Wozniak or... Well, Wozniak was a programmer. He also built a computer from scratch, but he's definitely not a tech, tech brain. He knows a lot. Don't get me wrong. He probably knows a lot more than me. But he is not a programmer. He is a businessman. But the ideas and how to run a company is where Steve Jobs did a great job as far as Apple is concerned. Okay? So I have to admit that my phone's going to run out of power so quick again. Ugh. But I have to admit that, I, I mean, I don't like the iPhone 5 design, but the hardware is, is perfect. But just like any other OS, there's going to be some problems when it when a new OS is released. It's going to be problems. Siri, no problem. Or very few. Not enough to really notice. Apple Maps, there are a lot of people, not everybody, but there are a lot of people who are having problems with Apple Maps. And the same thing goes with Windows 8. Windows 8 is superb, but it is young. And because it's young, people will say, well, they don't have enough apps. Well, that's because there are not enough users of Windows 8 to even create an app for it. Keep in mind that when Windows 7 came out, people were desi still designing apps, applications, say like that, for Windows XP, compatible with Windows XP, say like that. So you had to consider that. But then after a certain time, people stopped supporting Windows XP and were creating apps for Windows Vista and above. And they said on their packages, you have to have Windows Vista or Windows 7, you know. And the same thing is going to happen with Windows 8. It's going to take a little bit before you see more applications for Windows 8. Not a lot of time. I'll say, I'll say give it a couple of years. But I'm going to tell you this, though. In my predictions, the amount of apps going into the App Store or the Marketplace or whatever Microsoft calls it, it's going to increase faster. And it's going to eventually hit the mark where there's going to be more apps for Windows 8. It's just bound to happen. 
And so just give it time, but Windows 8 will catch up to Android and Apple uh, products. But at this time, Apple and, and, and Android or iOS and Android are the kings of apps. They are. You know, there's no two ways about it. Is it the king OS? Well, this is all a matter of opinion. Everybody has their own opinion. Ah, excuse me for the sniffles. But in my opinion, in my opinion, okay, and it's my opinion, um, the Microsoft OS is Windows 8. Uh, Windows Phone 8 is a far superior OS by itself. Now, I'll tell you this much. Every time I talk to somebody on the Internet about how they like their Windows Phone and their Microsoft Surface or any Windows 8 device, they absolutely love it. I saw some lady at the library the other day. In fact, I wrote an article about that. I wrote an article about that in my blog where I asked her, because I saw her with a Microsoft Surface, I was like, wow, you got a Microsoft Surface? She's like, yeah. I was like, how do you like it? She said she absolutely loves it. She has an iPad. She loves her iPad as well. Nothing wrong with that. Right? But where was her iPad? Where was it? At home. Because there's more apps for iPad, she switched from using her iPad for business to her Microsoft Surface because Microsoft Surface has everything she needs for, guess what, business. Because Microsoft Surface Windows RT comes with Microsoft Office already installed. It's a preview version, but that's going to get upgraded once Office 2013 is fully released. It's going to automatically be upgraded, and it is going to be in Metro. It's not going to run in desktop. In fact, I'm thinking that Microsoft will get rid of desktop altogether. But that's not here or there, okay? We'll see what happens when it happens. <clears throat> Actually, there's a hack right now that allows you to install certain applications on the desktop of Windows RT. There's a hack for that. And Microsoft isn't doing anything about it to stop it. Interesting, huh? Someone's passing by. Hold on. And so there's there's an app for that actually, and it's installed on the kernel. But you know I can imagine that Windows RT because it's it's operating off of the Snapdragon processor that not all programs can run on Windows RT. You know like for instance Sony Vegas, it's not going to be fast enough, and in all the commands that that runs on a Windows RT, I don't think applications will be able to access those, or, or I don't think a Microsoft Surface Windows RT or any Windows RT device can run standard applications. But Microsoft has announced, well, Intel actually has announced that they're coming out with a low-power um, processor that can run Windows RT devices. Now, if that comes out, there may be a possibility where Windows RT is just going to be a, uh, like a netbook. It's going to be a slow computer, but fast enough to run Microsoft Office and all the Windows, and Windows uh, 8 programs and the modern UI. I think that's going to happen. And I think that's not too far away. I think that's going to happen within the next few months. It's going to be Microsoft Surface, Windows RT, Intel Edition. So NVIDIA may want to step up their, <laughs> step up their game a little bit to keep their processor viable. Of course, they got Android to keep the Snapdragons going. But here's something else, too, that uh, came out in the news, is that someone has come out with an Android emulator. Since Android is an open source application or OS, you can simultaneously not not boot up an Android 
power off and boot up and Windows Phone. No. You can simultaneously have a tile that will launch an Android app on your Windows Phone and it runs smoothly. This is an Android emulator. And keep this in mind. That is possible. It's a possible thing. The only problem is you have to break your phone in order to install it. Now, will Microsoft accept that app into the Microsoft Store or the uh, Marketplace? Probably not, but let's say they do. That means you can install any Android app on your Windows Phone device. But here's the problem with that when it comes to Microsoft, though. There's a problem with that. The problem is, is that Microsoft Windows Phone is trying to be relevant in the marketplace and you know in in the whole mobile system. Okay? If app developers know that all they have to do is create an iOS device and an and oh I'm sorry, iOS app and an Android app and they know that they can, you know, uh, get people to download the emulator to run Android apps on a Windows Phone, then there'll be no need for them to design a Windows Phone app, which will defeat the purpose of having Metro-style apps on your Windows Phone. Because if you ask me, I like the Metro look. I love it. I don't like the way Android works. I really don't. I'm, I'm sorry. I truly do not like the Android look. I would prefer that all my applications run in Metro. In short, yeah, I got an Android now. But, you know, when things get better for me, I am definitely getting a Windows phone. And the thing is, can you run Android on a Windows phone? It is possible. You can probably run a Windows Phone app on an Android. Because there are a lot of apps that are available for Windows Phone that is not available for Android. That is exclusive to Windows Phone only. I had a couple of those apps on my old Windows Phone before I lost it. I had a, a couple of apps. And so, you know, here's... you got to uh, imagine that Windows Phone and Windows 8 is brand new. You're, but there's another study that came out. People who download apps and they got like a ton of apps on their phone barely use those apps because what comes with the phone is what counts. If you ask me, out of the box, when I bought my Samsung Focus, which has Windows, Windows Phone 7.0, and then I upgraded to 7.1, I, I didn't get a chance to do 7.5. <clears throat> Excuse me for the sniffles. I rarely used any of the apps that I installed. I installed this one app called Chicago Metro. I was in Chicago at the time. It was called Chicago Metro, I think. And I used that app to determine when the next bus came or the next train. It was a great app. In fact, there was actually two different apps. Uh, one for the um, L train or the L, which is the um, what they call the subway in Chicago. And there was another app for the buses. And, so, and it determined where you were. And all you got to do is uh, tell it what bus stop you're at because, you know, you're on a corner. There are like four or five bus stops within walking distance. So then you stand there. You tell it what bus stop you're at. As it determines your GPS, you just tell it exactly what bus stop you're at. And then it tells you when the next bus is coming because every bus had a GPS on it. So it told you if the bus was late. If the bus, was, you know, it told you exactly where the bus was, which is nice because you go to the Bing Maps on the app and you saw the little buses running down the street. So you knew exactly where that bus was at. And sure enough, with a maybe like a 30-second delay, maybe, 
maybe 30 seconds, maybe less. Because I, I look at the map, I see the bus is like five blocks away. I looked up and the bus is only three blocks away. Great app. I wish they had an app like that here in Austin. But I'm, it probably is, because I haven't had it on the phone. So I, it probably is an app for Austin Metro, Capital Metro. But the thing is, is that, you know, I barely use any of the apps on the phone. Rarely. It's because everything that I wanted was built in. Microsoft Office, OneNote, Exchange, Windows uh, Windows Live. At the time, it was, you know, um, my Hotmail account, which was Windows Live address. You know, it, it had everything I wanted. So I, there was no need for me to use anything else. Okay, my battery's out. This is the end of my log for today. Peace out.